Hey guys, so today, oh, Peter, Peter won't walk past the tripod. It's okay, you can walk past it, it's okay. You can do it. She's trying to get to the couch. It's okay, it's not going to hurt you. Oh, it won't fall on you. Do you hear her whining? Go on. You okay, come on in here with me. Yeah, she's a good dog. I got a new like microphone thing. I was complaining to Jesse about how echoey uh, the kitchen was for filming. And he was like, oh, well, I have one of these microphones. Like, oh, okay. So anyway, we're trying it out. Hopefully it won't be annoying. We'll see. So PETA can't get past the tripod. Just put her in the room. Well, I don't know. I think she wants to lay on the couch. Yeah, she'll be fine. Yeah. Take 93. Hey guys. Okay, today I am so, so excited because I am making my favorite recipe for my favorite cookbook. Um, if you've been on this channel at all recently, you already know that I'm obsessed with this cookbook. Um, I've linked it in other videos. I'll link it down below. I think you should own this cookbook. It's super good. I've made a dozen recipes from it so far and pretty much all of them have been spot on delicious, which is not like due to cooking ability. It is due to the quality of the recipes. I am a big believer in good cookbooks. So anyway, we are making conchas today. Oh my gosh, if you have ever been to a Mexican bakery, you have probably had a concha. They are the most delightful, heavenly little sweet buns with a crackly topping, which is delicious. When we lived in Mexico, we didn't know what they were called for a really long time because we were completely clueless. And my daughter named them Ankylosaurus bread because she is obsessed with dinosaurs. And she thought that the backs of them, the tops of them looked like the backs of the Ankylosaurus dinosaur. So <laughs> we, the name stuck for us. We still always call them Ankylosaurus bread. I will probably forget and call them Ankylosaurus bread during this video. It is conchas from this recipe. We are actually making Canchas de pinole. Uh, the topping is going to be this delicious, light cinnamony topping. I can't wait, I can't wait. So what we have to do right now is just start the recipe. Here's the thing, people say a lot of really dubious things on YouTube these days, but what I'm about to tell you is 100% the truth. If you make these conchas and Kylosaurus bread, if you make these rolls, you are going to have a better life. Your happiness will immediately increase. Your outlook will become sunny. You're, you, like, you're just gonna have a good life. 2020 is a terrible year. Can we all agree? It's a terrible year. I hate 2020. I do not, I do not approve of this year. However, if you make these, your 2020 is automatically gonna get better. I promise you, I promise you. And you know that if it's on YouTube, it must be the truth, so just saying. <laughs> okay, first things first, we need to get some warm water and some yeast. Okay, so I've got yeast and sugar in here. The recipe calls for two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. I have instant yeast. So if you um, are, you know, check your yeast package to make sure what kind of yeast you have, because if you're using instant yeast like I am, you actually use less. The, uh, it comes out to like three quarters teaspoon of instant yeast for every teaspoon of active dry. So do that. All right, so that is going in. I've got half a cup of warm water and half a cup of warm milk. That is all going in here and that's gonna get 
activated and bubbly and all that good stuff. I actually just got this. I'm so excited about this KitchenAid mixer. Um, when we moved to Mexico, story of my life, I sold mine. And then when we moved back, I, I was complaining that I could not afford it. Um, the other one had been a hand-me-down from my mom and I was looking at the prices of the new ones, just going like, oh my gosh. In fact, I was just recently complaining about um, how expensive they are, but, 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 <gasps> KitchenAid has refurb models on their website, which means you can get them for way, way cheaper than new. So I got this thing and I am so excited and very like happy about it. That's actually how I got my Vitamix too. So if you've never bought a refurb um, kitchen appliance, I highly recommend it. All right, while that is activating, I'm gonna get our other ingredients ready. Okay, so I've got half a cup of sugar. I've got a teaspoon of salt, a stick of unsal unsalted butter softened, and two eggs. These eggs, I love these because these came from my neighbor's chickens. How pretty are they? These need to be at room temperature. The best way I have found to do this is to put them in some hot water for a few minutes and let them come up to temperature. Uh, it's a little bit safer, I have read, to do that rather than just letting eggs sit out for a while. So I'm gonna crack those. I just had to show you the shells because I think they're so pretty. Ah, hello. Okay, so now we're going to add the rest of our ingredients and mix it up into a dough. So we've got half a cup of sugar, check. Teaspoon of salt, check. Two room temperature eggs, check. Oh. Our butter. And now we're going with four cups or 500 grams of flour. Now, every other time I have made this recipe, I have weighed the flour. I tend to like to weigh out the dry ingredients for baking. However, every single time um, the dough has been like so, so, so unworkably wet that I've ended up having to add a bunch of flour. So my thinking is that perhaps, perhaps like measuring it will actually be better because you usually, it tends to add more flour when you are scooping it rather than weighing it. So I'm just going to scoop it this time and we're going to find out how it goes. This is all purpose flour. One, two, three, and four. Remember at the beginning of COVID and you couldn't buy flour anywhere? I still can't, f I've gotten flour, um, but I still haven't found yeast. Fortunately, my mom bought like a bulk bunch of yeast online, so we're set, but everybody's bacon, which is kind of great. Okay, we're mixing this on medium speed for 10 minutes until it really comes together as a nice dough. Usually I have to scrape it down a few times, so let's see how that goes. Okay, so our dough has been kneading for 10 minutes now. We're going to, let's just take a look at it. It's kind of weird doing this backwards. It is a very, um, it's not a dry dough and it's not a stiff dough. Oh my gosh, look at this. Also, I did not have to scrape it down the way I usually did, so I believe that scooping the flour was the way to go. Look at this dough, oh my gosh. Okay, all right, stop, Erin. Anyway, this beautiful, silky delightfulness is gonna go back in there. I'm gonna put some oil in the bowl, 
pop this back in there, it is gonna hang out in a warm place for about two hours or until it's doubled in size. All right. Just flipping it over a couple times, get nice and coated with this oil. Oh, it's such a soft dough. It's so nice. All right, gonna cover this and let this sit and I will see you in a couple hours. Okay, it is a little bit more than two hours later. My dough took its sweet time raisin. Uh, <laughs> With all, with the eggs and the butter and everything, it's, it's a pretty slow to rise dough. Um, but it is finally ready. <laughs> I actually transferred it after I turned off the camera because I remembered I need the mixing bowl to make the topping. So I've got this dough. Now I am going to dump it out, divide it up into 12 buns. Now, if you are like a really precise person, you can weigh them out. Gabriella recommends them to be 75 grams each. I would love to be that type of person, and yet I am not. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, you know, we're gonna, we're just, yep. Come on, here we go. So lovely. All right, so I am just gonna take my dough scraper, divide it in half, and then into six pieces. And some of these are gonna be bigger than others, and the reason you don't want that is that they'll all cook at slightly different times. But you know what? It's 2020 and I've got a five-year-old and I simply cannot be bothered. All right, so I'm just gonna shape these and put them on some baking trays. The dough is so satisfying to work with because it's just so soft and pillowy. Um, yeah, I feel like this is one of those like sensory play activities that they design for three-year-olds. <laughs> I love it, love it. So you don't have to put this on two um, baking trays. You just don't want them to um, touch one another as they rise. They need to keep their distance. These need to be appropriately socially distanced buns. There's just so many jokes that could go there. So I put them on two trays because it gives me a little bit of room to work with them. Now, when I'm baking them about halfway through the baking time, I rotate the trays. So they're all getting the same <laughs> you know what I mean. They're all getting the same heat and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, so we've got our buns. Twelve buns. Now we make our topping. I think most of the ones we had in Mexico, if not all, were just chocolate or vanilla, which would be a fabulous way to go. But I tried the pinole because of the recipe in my book. And I have to say, I love it. I adore it. This is made with corn and oh, it has the most wonderful aroma. It's like a sweet, nutty, cinnamony with like a, a hint of fresh tortilla weaving through everything. I love this stuff. In fact, I don't know, like what else can I use this on? Please comment below. What else can I do with pinole flour? Because this is all I've made with it. Um, of course, I will have no problem going through the whole bag on just these conchas because I love them so much. Um, but anyway, I've got a quarter cup of pinole flour. I've got a quarter cup all-purpose flour and I've got third cup of 
um, powdered sugar. We're gonna put these in our mixer and then add in half a stick of cold butter chopped into, oh, gotta get every little bit of that goodness. Um, cut the butter into some small cubes and then we're gonna mix this all together. All right, so this is going in there. We're gonna mix it until it achieves a cookie dough consistency. I don't know that it really reminds me of cookie dough, but I'll show you what it looks like when it's ready. I forgot the salt, forgot the salt. All right, we're going with a pinch of salt. Resume. Okay, so it has a crumbly kind of wet sand texture. I am going to spread a part, piece of parchment paper pour our cookie topping on that, put another piece of parchment paper, and then roll it into a sheet. Well, that's all of my parchment paper. I will save this for Harper because she has informed me she has a paper tube collection and that any paper tubes that I have to please save for her. So this will go to Harper. All right. It smells so good. It, in a strange way, has an almost popcorn flavor. Oh, I'm telling you, this stuff is so good. I got mine on Amazon and I will link down below in the description box um, which one I got. All right, she says an eighth inch thick. Now, if you have a cookie cutter, this is where you're gonna use that. I don't have cookie cutters, so I'm gonna use a glass. My grandmother always used a, a cup, so I like that. You're basically going to cut out little rounds. They crumble very easily. And you're gonna take the round, your cookie, and you're gonna put it on top of the bun. Sometimes it's gonna break. And you know what? It's okay. We're just gonna keep on going. Yes. Another thing she says that you can do is to just take a tablespoon of this and smoosh it onto the top of the bun. So that's also an option. I've got some smaller ones, so I'm gonna go to a smaller cup for those. <laughs> go to Harper's Welch's juice. Welch's, um, I think they were from jam. I think they were jam jars or something. Do you guys remember these from the 90s? or late 80s or early 90s. I don't know, but Harper's grandmother brought them up for her from Florida and it's her favorite. Okay, at this point you can cut little designs in them if you want, or you can just leave them plain. I've done it both ways and both are pretty. Um, I'll do a some cut and some I'll leave plain so that you can see the difference. Now we're gonna cover them, let them rise for about a half an hour, and then bake them in a 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes. And then we are going to feast. <laughs>
I'm literally looking at Jesse and Harper right behind the camera whispering to one another. Are you guys eating the ankylosaurus bread? Is it good? Harper nods vigorously, so I think that's a thumbs up. Here we go. The moment of truth, we get to try it. Hot from the oven. I can never wait long enough till they cool. Mmm. 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 So good. Mmm. The inside is this fluffy, light, soft, billowy dough, and the top is crinkly, crunchy, lightly cinnamony, very sweet and delicious. Mmm. Mm. You have to try these. These are so good. Also, she says in the book that you have to eat them the day that you make them. And this is actually true. You cannot keep these and eat them the next day. Do you remember? the Bible story where the Israelites were wandering in the desert for 40 years and God fed them with manna. But the only thing was with manna, right? Give us this day our daily bread. You couldn't save it and eat it the next day. It would spoil. It would be no good the next day. Well, this is manna. This is, I'm pretty sure what they were eating. This is manna. It's not going to be the same the next day. They go stale so fast. So you have to eat them day of, but there is a trick. Two things you can do. One, you can freeze them and then reheat them in the oven and bring them back to life and they are also very good that way. Or you can let them go to the next day, let them get a little teensy bit stale. And then in the book, there is a recipe for a sandwich that you make with them. You slather on some delicious refried black beans and top it with some salty cheese. And then you've got the rich beans, the salty cheese, the slightly sweet roll. So, so good. So anyway, leave me a comment down below about uh, other ways I can use the pinole flour and let me know if you've tried conchas. Do you love them so much? What are your other favorite things to get at a Mexican bakery, whether in Mexico or a Mexican bakery where you live? So I will see you guys next time. Bye.